Good morning. Welcome to the Board of Education School Board Work Session. Please stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Dr. Kane, would you like to introduce the presentation? Yes, we have two presentations. I would like to make a motion that we amend the agenda to delete the break and close the meeting after the presentations. Second. So moved. All in favor, sorry. Aye. 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 Okay, Dr. King. All right, thank you. So we have two presentations this morning. Sorry, one more thing. I'm sorry, yes, no problem. I, um, what we gotta say is, is there a motion? There, I, I move that we accept the agenda as, de as amended. amended. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So we will have two presentations and then we will close the meeting after that. The first presentation is regarding our policy committee update. So last week our policy committee met. We are happy to say we have two board members who sit on that committee, Mrs. O'Connor and Ms. Harlow. And Mr. Farley is going to provide an update with regard to what happened at that time. Good morning, Dr. Kane, members of the board. Working from, let's see, this, give me just a moment for it to come up on the screen, please. While we're waiting, I have a question, Mr. Farley. Who's, okay. um, who's, who makes up, the, who's on the committee besides our two members? Uh, I can show you in a minute. So okay, I'll sorry. In, in just a okay. As soon as this oh, comes up. So what you see here is um, a flow chart that reflects our business process for policy development and implementation. During the course of our meeting with the policy committee, this chart was uh, revised to add a section called stakeholder input between the policy committee and uh, posting the policy uh, onto the um, web page. So, um, we've discussed that stakeholder list and we believe it will vary depending on the nature of the policy. The policy uh, committee uh, met on November 16th. Uh, it included Carrie O'Connor, Sharon Harlow, jo Joyce Jones, a parent and, um, and uh, person who's interested in this topic, Mr. Paluski, Mr. Fister, myself, Betsy Andrews, and Meredith Grussing. Ms. Andrews and Ms. Uh, Grussing are a part of the process in order to facilitate um, development and edits to policies. <coughs> the committee um, agreed that um, <coughs> we'll follow the flow chart and that we will in the future hyperlink the flow chart to the policies that are being referenced in it. We also discussed the fact that policies are developed in a variety of formats, including Word and um, Google Docs, and that they are then changed over to um, a PDF, which is not editable. So what we want to do going forward is that all policies will be developed in Microsoft Word, and that we will then use track changes from that fresh Word document, and only one person will be allowed to make the, um, the change or accept all the edits or recommendations. And our hope is in that way, we will have a smoother flow and that track changes will do a better job of identifying anything that's changed. Um, and the committee really had some good discussions about this, especially Ms. Jones, and uh, we appreciate everyone's input. <clears throat> we also discussed using local resources such as uh, students at, at uh, local colleges um, in the massive effort to take all of these documents, 
some of which are handwritten or have handwritten notes on them, get them all into WordPerfect so we can start the editing process with consistent track changes. Is everyone familiar with track changes? Yes? Good. Okay. Um, we want to make sure as well that the website is clear by deploying the track changes version of the document that's being uh, submitted to this process. We will have every change that's ever on it and we can talk about which one was first read, which one was second read. Uh, so it's our expectation that that will change on the website uh, given with our next policy adventure. But we'll still reflect what changes were made on first read and what changes were made on second read. That will be documented within our changes. Right, because when you adjust a prior edit, it shows. Right. Okay? Right. And we don't lose it. Right. We want to make sure that, um, that parents can be adequately involved in the policy development process and it was recommended that each school, school include information in weekly uh, parental communications, like a Thursday letter. And all of these things are, are recommendations we'll take back to the uh, superintendent and the executive team for discussion. Uh, stakeholder list is uh, long and varied and probably will get longer as we look to include people for their input and, and really demonstrate our transparency on all of these issues. Uh, we don't think we're going to need the editing conventions, um, but upon reflection over the weekend, I was thinking it may be helpful to talk about the tense that we intend to write in um, and that sort of thing. So I'll probably make recommendations with the help of my colleagues on uh, sort of a style guide more, uh, okay? Um, <coughs> uh, Joyce Jones uh, agreed to uh, edit Policy 110 and Regulation 110.1 uh, and in hopes that this could serve as a model for future policy revision, and um, so we'll work with her. And I think she took it with her, so be prepared to make those edits. Uh, naturally subject to uh, approval by the superintendent uh, and the board. Uh, we also discussed rotating board members on the policy committee, and it was recommended that the, uh, the board president sit on this committee uh, going forward and uh, and we're going to determine when we need our next meeting. That's the bare essence of what happened at our meeting. That's very good. The only thing I would mention is that Mr. Fister did bring up a point that some of our current policies really aren't even policies. So we not only deal with the handwritten mimeograph sheets that might go back 20 years with notes on them, we also recognize that some of those existing policies really can easily be transformed into a regulation or a rule as long as we document that. My biggest concern was when we see the uh, list of things to be rescinded, sometimes it's daunting, but when we recognize that some of those really aren't policies anyway, it really lessens the load of us being concerned that we may do away with something that should be a policy. So I think that's real cognizant to everyone on this committee that that's not what we're going to do. And when we recognize something that doesn't need to be a policy, it'll re be reflected in those changes. And that was a really good point Mr. Fister brought forward. Thank you, Mr. Fister. I, I, I agree with that one, too, because there are some things in there that, according to Comar, are the superintendent's decisions, not what the board needs to make a policy on. Right. So we, I totally agree with that because, it, I mean, otherwise we are not following what our job is on the board. We had discussed early on in the policy review and update process that there would be those that are more like regulations within the discretion of the superintendent and that we would make you aware of that. So um, how would you like to go about that? Just that way, um, when you all do decide or the committee decides that there are policies existing that really do not need to be a policy, we reflect 
why, how we're going to change that, what we're going to implement it into with Dr. Kane's recommendation to move forward in that direction. If she feels it is something that needs to be a policy, we will continue working on it as a policy. Good. Thank you. Great. And thank you. So that, Mr. Farley, would not change from what we're doing currently. So you'll bring up the list of policies to be rescinded and the reasons why. And uh, with the board's recommendation from a couple of meetings ago, we'll just be sure to be real specific with regard to why that policy is being rescinded. Thank you, Dr. King. Anything else? I just want to add for the benefit of parents and, and everybody out there that, um, we, you know, we do look around at other counties and the language used and policies and what worked and didn't work. Um, so we're not just internally developing stuff here <clears throat> without um, being in mind with historically what is happening in other counties and, and borrowing language that is appropriate at times. So thank you. Thank you. And, and also, Ms. O'Connor, for that matter, that um, all of the policies go through a legal yes, review absolutely. as well for yes. content. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. I thank you all so much. Have a great day. Thank you, Mr. Farley. Thank you. And so our next presentation, um, Mr. Josh Combs is going to come forward and give us an update on technology. Mr. Combs. This is our, going to be our proposal for our five-year technology plan coming up. We are at our last year of our existing five-year plan. In the presentation, we'll, you'll see, uh, we'll go through and do a overview of the entire five-year plan, and then we'll go through each year in more detail so you can see uh, a little more descriptive. So this is the... First couple. You guys want to go through each the overall? Or do you want to just do each each year in detail? Go through, just go just, through yeah, your presentation then. as you. Can. Um, so this is the first couple years. Uh, next year will be the first year of this proposal, where we will be getting the high school laptops. And we'll be, we'll stop. The high school laptops would be the biggest thing next year, and the teacher laptops. That'll be the big changes and uh, refreshing that. Right now, we're doing a basically a four year refresh plan on our desktops, our laptops, uh, student devices. Another big plan is to do some the PLTW laptop carts for that program. They stay inside the classroom to a little more high end. You would say. Project Lead the Way. Oh, sorry, Project Lead the Way. What does that mean? <laughs> that was on my notes. Part of the CTE <laughs> courses uh, through Adam Tolley. Okay. Uh, infrastructure upgrades, uh, replacing our wireless, uh, upgrading our switches that have reached their end of life. Um, we have to uh, replace our filter box. It's reached its end of life for next year. Year two, we go into Replacing our power school servers, that's what we use for our student information databases, is our grades, attendance, uh, discipline. Um, our main firewall box, um, it's our main security to route everything all over traffic and, and protect everything coming in. For the students, it'll be the third and fourth grade book, our Chromebook carts for the classrooms, uh, refreshing them. And Also, paying our, uh, we plan on doing leases for um, most of the devices. So, we'll be paying some uh, lease payments every single year. So, the second year will be going into our second year payment for the laptops, for the teachers, and for the high school student devices. Mr. Combs, can you tell us the advantage to that as opposed to what we used to do in the purchase end of this project? They're very similar into before we were basically doing loans mm -hmm. um still with an interest rate obviously on a loan same as a a lease we still get the option with the lease to buy out do the dollar buyout so we can buy out the laptops and either refer them down to another program or, or sell them back and take that money and use it for something else in curriculum instructions or operations the nice thing about any of the purchases you can bundle everything together your warranty and stuff like that um there's not too much difference in between the two programs. Um, the support is still going to be the same. We're going to do a four-year 
hardware support through the manufacturer, and anywhere that we need to do optional insurance to cover theft, vandalism, we're also going to try to add, I don't want to better protect our devices and, and fix them <laughs> in a more timely manner. And I believe that when the board decided to go this way, it was just a more um, advantageous process for us in that we're not three quarters of the way through a loan process and now all of a sudden we have big major issues. We'll be leasing these and that support will go along with us during that five year period that may at one point be much more advantageous to us than having purchased them ahead was my understanding. And in addition, we were able to purchase a, um, a maintenance package mm -hmm. in which we didn't have to charge our families at all. Right. So a big it, advantage it, for this yeah, year. that was a big advantage. The insurance part of it. Insurance, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. absolutely. And so we were able to purchase that and we were able to upgrade the device that we got. So we didn't have to have the bags, the computer bags that you know were falling apart after a number of years, uh, very sturdy. Um, tested and we talked to the kids about them when we're out in schools so big advantages there uh, we are in a better place with the purchase with this plan um, and so moving forward I think that it'll be um, the best option in addition to that we're able to make those payments over a period of right. time um, so we're able to upgrade different groups as we should so without things falling apart on us right well, thank you I have another on that we but as we go for, through these years, then we have to buy them over, or we have to lease them over again. So part of the maintenance is, maintenance is actually replacement within a few years. Is that all one big plan, or is do we have to get into a contract every four years or so? It's a them? renewal. It's a renewal. Every, yeah, it, it, it's a four-year lease. So at the end of the four-year lease, you can uh, do a dollar buyout, okay. or they return devices, and you start another four-year lease with whatever device you want at that time. The paperwork is already done. It makes it easier to renew, but you get to choose what, you don't have to be stuck with one device. You can go to a different device um, and pay whatever the lease is, but it'll be a renewal contract every four years. Now in the maintenance, is this a, a big plan to where we, we turn them in and they fix them and you guys don't have to fix them or how does that work? The, the maintenance plan that Dr. Kane brought <coughs> up, um, we, we can send off to another company. They were doing repairs and they send them back. Um, we only do that right now. We're only doing that for stuff that is heavy damage or theft, right, to get them replaced. Anything internal, uh, broken screen, we still try to get the part in from Dell using that manufacturer warranty and then fix them in-house as much as possible. But there's always the option of when we get slammed with a lot of repairs, we can send them off to this third-party company to have them fix them and return them to us. And the, and the time frame for return is a lot quicker. Yes, so it used to be a month, and, it's, and lately it's been a week. They will ship us a box. We put the device <coughs> in the box, send off to them. They return it to us. So the company has definitely sped up the process on getting devices back because we generally like to get everything done within a week as, as much as possible. Which is another benefit. So as we continue to refresh the devices for the different groups of students, the different grade levels, you will not hear those concerns from children and families about, I've had this computer out for three months, and mm -hmm. that will go away. Right. Plus, Dr. Kane brought up, we are, we're used a um, better protector case that goes wrapped around. It's a, it's a drop case design, so you can drop the laptop at a better height to better protect the screen. Still happens, but it definitely reduces the number of damage that we're receiving with By the severity, drops. I would think. Yes. Mm -hmm. Another question on your presentation here, that the, f the money, I'm trying to figure out where year two is. Is the, num the figures you have here are year one or year two? The ones right between them, or they're identical? This, look, this is year one. I don't know. That PDF, this, did it take your column off? Yeah, this is in my... Took the whole <laughs> PDF. Well, I mean, uh, f the question I have is for this particular year, ni 19, um, what, 18? No, this is uh, year one? Year one, we've, that's this is the, the money we've been given by the commissioners in our No, we haven't received capital. this. We're in year five. This, this, uh, nothing is guaranteed. We're starting fresh from year one to year five, another five-year plan. We haven't completed our year five at this point. Right, this is yes. year five. Yes. Okay. This is year five. Oh, okay, see, 1920. Mm -hmm. 
So this is what we'll be asking Excluded. for in our yes. capital budget. Absolutely, yes. Um, and then whatever year two is, you've um, got those figured out. But what I was going to say is we, a presentation, a real clear presentation should be given to the commissioners on the, fu the four years. It's very helpful. And the last time we got into, I guess it was a five-year plan, they actually came and, and listened to our presentation and asked us a lot of questions. Then we were, they had a comfort level of what we were doing, and then we were able to sort of have a guaranteed capital budget for on this, on this subject for five years. Remember that? It was a really useful discussion on budget with them. Idea. So we'll make sure that happens. Okay, thank you. So I just want to get this straight. So we're looking at entering into a new contract as we move forward, right? Okay. So my question and issue, um, and maybe it's going to be addressed, is just connectivity in our county and how much have we progressed and what are, you know, that's additionally important for the commissioners to understand because they would maybe be looking and working on the connectivity issue. Do we know where we stand um, each year on that? Is that anything that you would be able to share with us? Or is that not a part of... What we're what do you talking mean? about today. Can so I, we have. Um, you talking about from home? Right. So students, <laughs> okay. students in our county, and and it's lovely that that my children get a chance to to benefit from it at night because we have good connectivity. But I know it's a challenge in mm -hmm. District One and other parts of our county. Correct. So in moving forward and entering into a new contract, you know, additionally for us holistically to address the issue of connectivity because it matters, and we'll get the best the students who have a lack of this um, in our county. Mm -hmm as we move forward looking at that so that we can maximize the benefits of these laptops amongst all of our students in the county. So yeah, that, that, is, that is an issue and I know that it came up um, last year, this past year with uh, connectivity across the county and, and I'm sure that's a long range plan. All of our schools are wireless, so all of our schools have connectivity. Um, and while students are in school, they do have the use of the devices currently, and they will continue um, unless something catastrophic, hap <laughs> catastrophic happens. But um, I understand your point, and I know that the county is working on something for that. Okay, but just to verify from what you just said, each school, even Every if school. it's in a district that doesn't have good connectivity after school, that school, while students are on those premises, can connect, and we don't have issues there. That it's is just correct. after hours. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. The other thing on after hours, and I'm not as clear on it, but there was a point when we initially started five years ago um, where they could, they could download the situation at school, and that enabled them to work on it at home at night. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if that's still the case or so. Um, certain things. Um, if you're talking about a Chromebook, um, the document docs, um, which is usually what you see tied into Google Classroom, which the teachers use, can go offline. That's still an option that's still uh, available to where you sync your Google Docs and Google Slides, uh, and basically they save to your computer. You can work on them at home offline, right. and then once you get back to school, it uploads back up to Google Drive, and, and the latest version is what the teacher sees. Which is basically what our goal is. Our goal is not to provide a computer to a student to take home to do mandatory work and they have no connectivity. I don't think we, we have a, a process that we require all that. Most of anything that they need to be done online, they do in school. Anything they do at home is documents and things such as that that they don't need internet for. These weren't meant to provide them worldwide access to the internet at home at night. Is that correct? Therefore, instructional purposes, mm -hmm. if students have connectivity at home, then, right. you know, that's great. But if they don't, it shouldn't be a, a detriment. Thing. detriment. Right. Yes. Exactly. Right. Exactly. So Mr. P, did you want to add something to that? I, I was just going to add to that. You know, the when we purchase a variety of, of resources for students, some of that requires the connectivity piece, but there's also a variety of resources that we provide that are that don't require connectivity. Um, I think in every situation that that I've been aware of, teachers are very good about ensuring that that's not a barrier to ensure that the child's getting the information and the resources that they need. And and I can assure you, in working with our schools, that that our teachers really go above and beyond to make sure if that is an issue that they're providing you know additional support and, and resources as as needed uh, then that's my question are they aware of 
each student that does not have that connectivity, in particular in the high school where getting access, a lot of their, their assignments, they need access to um, the internet and a lot of them have been going to the local libraries and to go different places. My, so I'm not sure how much, I know in the beginning that was a focus, I just don't know where it is now, you know, five years later. And I, I don't have those numbers right off the top of my head, Captain Kelly, I'd be happy to, to I, just, I mean, as far as the number of students that don't have connectivity at home. I, or or, or th for every, for several summers, we had part of our professional development was riding the wave and all. We don't do that anymore. And that was where some of those issues I thought were brought up to where, you know, here's the way you can you can make sure that the students that don't have connectivity. And one of, in the very beginning, it was download this at school, and this sure. is the only thing we're gonna have on homework for, you know, particular for those that don't have connectivity. Then when you come back, it, you know, it, it refreshes and they have their assignments sitting there for the teacher. That was an important part of the training in the beginning and just wondered if it's still going on or. I believe that's still what we follow. Yeah. I I can't recall recently where schools have provided that information that that that's a that that's a big issue okay. that they're that they're struggling with or, or dealing with. A lot of that training, as you know, uh, was getting teachers first familiar with the devices in order to, you know, go from just how do I use it to how do I use it to really improve instruction and meet individual needs of students. And I think our teachers have done over the last several years have done a significant um, job in learning multiple ways on how to use this device and helping students be able to use the device. Um, I can certainly, we can certainly look into that a little bit further with, with schools and, and bring that back up as it relates to connectivity. I'm just not hearing You're not a lot okay. that, every once that in a it's while a barrier. Have, uh, email or something that says, says, you know, we, we are having to, well, I think it's in watching some of the commissioners meetings, they're talking about this. Right. Yeah, it, it would be, I'd be interested to know if we could do any kind of survey amongst our student population. I know that seems like a big I believe idea. the county has done that I last year. That, I think last that's year. right. Okay. They did it because okay. they were looking in, Rob Kelly was saying Rob about Rob. getting internet to everyone in the county as part of that project. Um, they did, uh, did that survey did a survey where was student assessment which would probably be a yeah, they asked all the parents and other community then. members if they had right. internet what kind of internet they had what were they using what options they had mm -hmm. um, so the county does have that um, I believe planning zoning um, making Delgado probably has those results I know they were trying to look again about doing it again about what can they do to get something to where everybody has yeah. I don't know where the process that is that there but I know they were thinking about looking again this year about the original, can we do? It's a long-term plan, but what can right. we do to get something? The original to the process and progress kind of fell apart in that the company to provide that service kind of fell apart. Yes. We still have a current commission that is working towards looking into achieving this. It's just not the same company and the same goal that it was, say, a year ago. Correct. Still have a current commission assigned by the commissioners looking at internet access to those in the county who know who who do not have it and improving those who do we don't just have a problem in district one in north county we have some very rural areas even in our highly populated sections of the county Absolutely. where those homes also do not have the ability to get internet so it is a countywide process uh, problem more consolidated in certain areas. They're still looking to proceed with a solution. So thank you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> so um, Mr. Combs, my thinking is if you start on slide six, if you advance to slide six, where some of that, um, the dollars were cut off for year two, we're gonna go through that. So this one, slide <laughs> six starts with the technology plan, um, you know, in, so that you can see it more clearly uh, for year one, which we've just gone over. So, and then if you want to um, explain uh, the new language on the bottom for the high school laptops, the Chromebooks for year one, year two, 
and how those figures are adding? Yeah, so for year one, we're talking about entering in a first year. Back one, I think, Dr. King, number mm -hmm. six. There we, there we go. go. Mm -hmm. um, year one would be the first year lease into a four-year lease for the teacher laptops. Um, same thing for the high school student devices entering the first year lease. Um, and then one of the payments for, which we already know the amount, for the second year lease for the Dell Chromebooks, that would be fifth or eighth that we've, that we've started this year and right. we'll be moving on for the next four years. Um, the Project Lead Away laptop carts would be a purchase, um, just to purchase on those carts for those four classrooms. Can you explain that a little bit more? Uh, what Project Lead Away. unique about, I know what that is, but what's unique They do about like um, robotics, uh, design engineering. Um, their laptop's a little bit more robust because they use AutoCAD, which is a um, architecture 3D modeling. So it requires a more robust laptop to have a better video card in it than what we can currently get for every student. So we generally have a cart in that room to handle that software. We know it's going to run very well in that software. So we put one in each, um, each middle school has one, and then one at the high school, Queen Anne's High School has one. I just want to say that is such an important um, issue, and I really enjoyed doing the CTE tour, um, Mr. Tolley, and getting a chance to see exactly what you're talking about and being in the room with students who are working in that program and understanding the magnitude of what needs to happen technology-wise for them to be successful in that pathway. So. Um, year two, um, we're just going to straight purchase for third and fourth grade book carts, and then really generally the rest of it is, is continuing the lease payments for the years previous. So teacher laptops, high school laptops, and then the fifth or eighth Dell Chromebooks. These are estimate prices, obviously, because I don't know what the lease prices are yet. Uh, Say that again. I'm sorry. The, the prices that I have up here for the lease, I'm, I'm estimating based on the same values I have for the 5th or 8th. I'm hoping they'll be the same okay. type of contract. So, but again, these are draft prices. For, I don't know 100% until we enter that lease. Year 3, um, this would be for purchases for the elementary lab and the high school labs. Um, business applications, QuickBooks, um, Media Center Labs. There's about nine or so labs in each high school. They have been upgraded in a while now. And then every elementary school has a computer lab. So to be to replace all of them and upgrade all of them. This is where we also purchase um, the high school project lead away and computer design um, computers. They have Every, both high schools have a CAD room and kind of like a design engineering classroom. They're much higher end computers again because what they software that they have to run doing 3D modeling. So we tend to put very robust machines in those two labs, um, a little bit higher end than what's needed in a word processing and internet only class. And then continue on the leases. So this will also be the last year lease for the Dell Chromebook fifth or eighth and then continue in year three for the teacher laptops and high school student laptops. On the uh, elementary labs, mm -hmm. um, are there, we haven't replaced those in a long time, right? right. So this is a, a, this is a one-time purchase for several years. Four years. I would like to do a four-year. I would like to go into a four-year replacement plan. But haven't we had those in the elementary schools longer than that? Yes. We just start, This is our second time. We've never had a replacement cycle really for devices until this first five-year plan came out. So I'm trying to... Till this one? Right here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, they've been like 10 years we've had them, right? Some. One was nine, the other one's a little bit newer. They were, they were more scattered. They're, they weren't all done at the same time. Okay. This time, we're doing everything at the same time. That way we can create a replacement cycle plan. We know exactly when they would have to be upgraded. It's never been done before. This is what I would like to do. So everything would be on a four-year plan if we can. Well, my question is, if they have we had multiple issues with them i mean well right now they're out of warranty um they are 
nine years it's old. Much slower than, say, so. the teachers. Well, we've done the teachers. We, we've done everyone else besides them. So they're much slower than. We're, we're operating Windows 10 as part of our active directory migration. So we want to make sure we have computers that can support Windows 10 and can definitely run everything as fast as what we're giving the student mobile devices. So solid well, state. I guess the question is, is do, do a, does a second and, one, and one, first and second grade student need it to be fast? I mean, we, I'm not trying to, to downgrade what they're doing, but we. I'm pretty sure third and fifth still use them as well. It's part of um, specials or part of uh, Richmond. Well, I mean, be careful that that is a, a, a need for them if we've gone, if some of them have gone for nine, like you said, eight or nine years, and have they had a huge breakdown issue or if they're well, we can make the, the plan longer than four level. years. I just, I know I definitely need to start something. So no, I, I think part of, and I understand what you're saying, Captain Yeah, we can Kelly. go longer think, on the desktops. Yeah, I think part of the issue is that we are limited in what we can do with them mm -hmm. with, with an old computer. So I think that we'd be a lot better off if, if we could get some programs and that have, you know, higher graphic features and different things that motivate kids at those early ages. And when you're on a slow computer and it's going and going and going, kids start to lose motivation for that. Um, and we aren't really challenging them to the degree that we can with the programs that we have there. So we do better. Now, of course, you know, if it becomes a budget item, then we'd have to look at our technology plan and, and decide what we could live with and what we could live without. Uh, but as it stands, in order to continue to refresh all of our devices, including the computer labs, this is the plan that we're proposing um, and it keeps everything up to date and on a cyclical basis. But, uh, you know, we always are able to revisit that plan and uh, make some decisions when we need to do that. So I would have to think that there's nothing state of the art about a nine or 10 year old computer. Nothing. And I fully agree. I state of the art, regardless of age, is a progression that I think financially we need to keep in touch with that new technology. That's a better spending of our dollar than anything at a 10 year old level in my opinion yeah, and i don't disagree with you i'm just saying what there's a balance in, in what we can do if i can just um, add add one thing dr kane j just to be mindful of that all of our computer labs keep in mind that when we go through state testing um, all of our labs are used as as backups uh, if uh, Mr. Combs and his entire team does a complete test of our system, but we also have to keep in mind if something does happen, that is a fallback to support, um, you know, the online testing that that we have to conduct. And, and this isn't a huge increase in cost from the plan we've been in for five years. It it's no more, and it's probably going to give us a lot more for the same dollar. Yeah, we're doing a lot more than yeah. what we did in the first yeah. we're five years. A whole lot we're doing basically what we're doing in the first five years, plus a little bit more. So, who was it? Well, maybe what you get it for me later. I'm interested in what it cost our first five years each year, what it cost, mm -hmm. just so we can do a comparison. Mm -hmm. with the original plan. Okay, sure. thank you. Along the lines of speed, um, and not to keep harping on the issue, not device um, being the slow issue, but um, I know you said all of our schools have the connectivity. Are there certain schools that have a different level of, I don't know what the technical term is, like bandwidth or whatever it may be, where at some schools, because of a lowered ability to connect, there are speed issues, or are they all having the same speed processing at this point? Are we, we, we talking about going out the internet or talking about like wireless specifically? Um, when, when kids are in school and they're connecting. Um, wireless, if you're talking about wireless, yes. Um, again, that's part of kind of what we like to do a year one is our replacement of the wireless boxes. At the high schools, we're using what's called AC. So wireless AC, the, it's called it wireless, uh, that's the spec. And that's faster than say N. Faster so we're running that. wireless N at most of our middle schools and in elementary schools. So it's slower than say AC. Okay, I, I'm not kind of new to all these sort of so terms. So let's just go to numbers. Say wireless and you're connecting at 100 uh -huh. and wireless AC you're connecting at 1000. Okay, so, so there, how there's many? Your, there's your difference. Wireless N is about 108 megabits okay. and then wireless AC can go up to one gig. And then so wireless AC is the more desirable, more... It's faster. Fat, right, and then how many of our schools have the wireless AC at this point? The high schools for sure, and then as we've been buying over the years, we've been doing 
we stopped we're buying ants uh, about three years ago and when we bought ACs. Every time one went down in the classroom, we put an AC in. There's just no reason to – they were the same price at that point. Mm -hmm. So you might as well just upgrade over time. Okay. Um, I would have to check to see how many I have in the county left, in, but I would like to get everything to AC uh -huh. and switch from connecting 2.4 gigahertz to 5 gigahertz because that's also faster. We've already started doing that in the classrooms, and we've seen a much better – it's more stable connection by going to five gigahertz. There's an issue where if you use an old iPad, which is like 10 years old, it won't work when I'm, if I turn 2.4 off, there are down things, but it does. Our student devices go in this direction and go into the faster speed, go into five gigahertz, which is a bigger band. We see less dropouts. We see a much more stable connection. And that's what we've been doing this year. Is there a fee each time we're trying to upgrade to the AC and replace the existing N box? Is, am I using the right terms? Mm -hmm. So yeah. there is a fee each time we're upgrading. I got to buy a new box. Okay. I've replaced and, the hardware. So is that a part of all? That's, of uh, like the, the box right there. I've replaced one of those in each classroom. I have one in each classroom. Okay. And that's, so that's part of his infrastructure. Upgrades. That's for my infrastructure that's upgrades that's for, uh, for year uh -huh. one. Okay. Yep. Um, great. Thank you. And then one more technical term. Sorry to sound mm -hmm. like I don't, because I, I don't know this stuff. Um, so you're saying wireless. Within each school system, is there an ability for them to just plug in and be uh, quickly connected via some other way that's not wireless that happens? The labs are hardwired. Okay. Um, Ethernet, Which? they're, they're hard-lined and hard physically connected like a telephone is, so they're much, they're faster because uh -huh. anything that's physically hardwired is going to be faster than right. wireless. That, that's right. just the nature of it. Um, and they the, aren't moving around the building. They stay <laughs> in yeah. the Yes, site. they're physically yes. So like stay the, inside that room. Right, like the project um, So you, okay. you have issues. No, but really, the issues don't exist. Right. Um, Riley, you are bouncing from one unit to another unit as you're going from room to room. Um, in the classrooms, you might only have a couple of drops in the classroom. That's just uh, part of the state. When they were doing construction, they only limit how many drops are, exist in certain classrooms. So they're not an entire room can just physically connect. Plus, you'll have wires everywhere. So really, wireless is the only really option for these laptops in the classrooms. Okay. Thank you. So you'll look into, if it's all right, um, how many left that you need to upgrade. Oh, yeah, I can to find the, that out. Just so I can get a snapshot idea of that. Thank you. Absolutely. Uh, year four, this is uh, the classroom desktops, um, teachers, uh, office staff, uh, guidance counselors, um, those kind of desktops, uh, purchased them. Um, it's for the whole county. Um, the special ed laptops, we had them on a different, they had a different uh, start period on, say, other curriculum teachers. So we have a set of about 100 special ed laptops that we do a four-year cycle on. This is when they're due. Um, and me and the head of special ed come up with that list and, and get them distributed out. Explain the school requests. Uh. School requests are uh, anything that goes into capital, usually they go over $1,000. So if, say, a school is short of a couple projectors, say a school needs, you know, some kind of technology that they need inside their building that comes out of that section. So we try to, you know, between Mr. Pinner and I, you know, based on what the schools can do with capital cards or based on the budget that comes to us, we try to take care of some of those bigger items for them at the beginning of the year usually or at the end of the year, um, whenever, whatever money we have left over. So just to help them out, help schools out and help this relieve them. Laptops. No, no, no. This is just this is for teams. schools asking us their needs. Right. And so smart boards, projectors, interactive flat panels, okay. um, oh. which is a big one you see. Um, projectors is obviously an, always another one. Are things that connect to a projector. So. The classroom desktops. That is, if, if each child has a, a. This is for the teachers and staff. This is staff. This okay. is staff. All right. For the county. So board office, uh, teachers, office staff, guidance, their, their computer in their office, or uh, receptionists, uh, you know. And tell how that, Mr. Combs, if you would, how that is different, how that is distinctly different from laptops for teachers, the lease for. Yes. Um, what we do with the desktops, again, they're hard line to, to the network, so they're always going to be faster and more stable connection. That is what we connect to interactive 
projectors or interactive boards too, because in order for you to have interactivity to a projector, you've got to have something physically connected to it. So we use the desktop, the document camera generally, if they have in the classroom, and that is their primary machine to present to the students. Um, like in labs, they use it for what's called net support, so they can see student screen, student can share, present, or they can present to, to uh, the students. Um, it's also great to have a device in the classroom in case you have substitutes. Substitutes don't have laptops, so if they don't have one, it's great for them to come in. and They can use that device, they can connect, they can still do their lesson plan and use the, all the interactivity that a teacher might ask them to do. Um, it provides redundancy in case a teacher laptop breaks, I still have the desktop because the desktop breaks, we still have the laptop. It gives us that ability as well to always be teaching every day and not be dependent on just one device. It gives us, it gives us that backup. So this is um, on a regular schedule of replacement yes. too? Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. And then year five, we're basically going, starting again, basically with the uh, year four, we we'll go back to year four. Year four, we're starting um, back with the fifth or eighth student laptop replacement plan, like we did this year, because it'll be up there four years. So we'll be starting year four now doing the student at fifth or eighth for their Chromebooks. We'll be ending the lease for the teacher laptops and the student high school laptops. That lease will be done, going fifth to eighth, and then year five, we'll be going into the second year of the Dell Chrome fifth or eighth and then doing the students and teacher laptops again on year five. Which I think kind of shifts over one from the previous five years. And that's it. Any other questions about it? So I'll get you the numbers for the first plan and uh, the numbers for the wireless, the amount of numbers and what it would cost to upgrade them. And once you get those final figures um, of um, the leases, will you be getting a five-year figure out that far out? They'll be committing to the one that you didn't have the number on? Mm -mm. And, and that's why he used an estimate because uh, yeah, they I had won't to use project an estimate. out. Um, no, no, Based on this current contract, but yeah, again, I can only, I can only guess what current prices are. I, I mean, even Dell's not going to tell me what those, something might be three years. I try to base on what our prices that we buy now, which are generally pretty steady, and then based on our interest rate and what we're paying for the Dell Chromebooks, that same interest rate for that same amount of device. I try to use the same kind of factors, but again, these are draft prices. They recommend too when we get um, presentation from the commissioners that we we actually didn't have a summary sheet of each year. This is what it's going to cost. Mm -hmm. you know, well, they're not going to commit to five years in the future anyway. Yeah, uh, our gonna. capital budget will be. Well, we did. They did we last time. That. They oh, did, did they? Last yes, yes, they, they committed did. to five years. That's and why it was. It, it was nice. You know. So we we knew exactly what we're going to get for the next five right. years. So what dollar amount is our differential? from our last five-year plan to what we're projecting this five-year plan to cost, what's the dollar difference? I don't know the exactly, but I can certainly... It, it's very both. minimal. I've, yeah, I mean, it's not, as, it's not a crazy large... But we achieve a whole lot of extra services with this new plan. That was my understanding yes. when this was originally presented as an It was option. our first time. Yes. We learned a lot from our first yes. five years. Yes. Um, this is much more thought out plan? Well, it's just so. like devices. As time goes on, what you're using today is nowhere near what you <coughs> need in five years. Correct. So do programs and plans and lease versus buy, depending on your system's needs. Um, I appreciate us staying current with what is the best option for us. My last two cents is just that, you know, in speaking with friends who are all over the country from many years who have students in different school systems, how much they are um, very, uh, I don't want to use the word jealous, but very um, admire what we've done here in the county. And I know it came um, at times uh, in a very controversial way, but I'm happy that the direction was moved um, that, or that 
the commissioners and this school board decided to move in that direction. I see the benefits of my own children um, versus when they're with their friends in other counties who don't have the access to this technology. And then the last thing I want to say in line with, and it's not specifically the device, but just contacting students after hours um, who have possibly no connectivity. Bev, you brought up the issue of would there be an assignment that they would not have access to or whatever. And just my thought was any kind of staff sending emails, teachers that may be sending emails to students at night that they would need to know before the morning. And I don't know if that happens or not. But if it does, um, just being in mind, having them keep in mind. That does, do teachers ever email in the evenings to students? I, I can't say that they don't or, or, or that they do. I can say that, as Mr. Paluski said, it has not been brought to our attention as any type of an issue. <coughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Combs. If you could, um, thank you. <laughs> right on you. Thank you. Okay, so that ends our uh, presentations. Is there any um, discussion on any of the things that you've um, had this morning? I know that you all have uh, contributed significantly, and we appreciate that. It helps us all. Anything else? No, I'm pretty clear on everything we've covered. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Good. Excellent, mm -hmm. excellent. Um, so at this time, I think we move forward on future meetings, just the listing of those. We will have our new board members that were elected in November inducted on December 4th, and that oath of office will take place in this room at 430, which is a little bit of a change to our normal meeting time. So everyone who would like to attend, just be aware that that will happen at 430. December 5th. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. oh. Sorry, I thought when I saw it as the 4th, I was like, how did I think this was the 5th? Okay, it's December 5th. Can, can, can you, Wednesday. Aren't we confirming that it's December 5th, right? Okay. It's just written 4th on here. Okay. I, I've read off of it, but okay. I, I had it in my account for the 5th. So I apologize, December 5th. New oath of office for the new board members yes. beginning at 4.30, and I believe there'll be a little reception for them after, and we can do a meet and greet with the community. Um, the regular closed session of the board meeting will commence at 5.30, and we will reopen open session for our regular monthly meeting at 6.15 with our new board members on site. Um, school board budget work session will be December 19th. January 9th will be our regular board meeting for the month. January 16th, our work session. January 30th, our, we will have another board work se budget work session. It'll be our first budget meeting at the end of January. We originally had the 21st set as a board retreat, and that was just actually a mess print, and it was corrected to the 22nd. But the consensus of this board was that we would wait a few months until the new members got acclimated and had themselves to the point where they felt that they could participate in a retreat. So we're going to plan that for spring. Um, superintendent recommended budget will be presented on February 6th at our regular monthly meeting. The next work budget work session will be on the 13th of February and another one for board work session on February 20th. March 6th, our regular board meeting. That will be the board's requested budget. March 20th, a board work session. April 3rd, a regular monthly meeting. April 17th, our work session. May 1st, our regular monthly meeting. May 15th, our work session. June 5th, our regular monthly meeting. And June 19th, our regular work session. Subject to change with plenty of notice to the community in that event. Does anybody have anything to add? I did have one thing we wanted to mention we had discussed before we got in here was we're interested in starting up again those work, um, those weekly, weekly meet, reports. Um, reports. It gives us all the dates, new changes. Um, so Connor and I thought it, it sounded like for us it was very useful. So mm -hmm. if you're okay with that, I'm we, fine. we'd like to restart those. I don't think we need a, any kind of a vote on that. We are happy to provide that. I think it gives you a lot of background. Um, it may not necessarily be something that we're talking about in a board meeting, but sometimes we provide information about legislation that's coming forward, um, things that affect Maryland schools in general, and sometimes Queen Anne's County as well. So I think it provides a, a good uh, basis for what's happening in the state and in our county. 
Is there any opportunity for board input if they knew of something that they thought maybe the community and the other board members should know um, to bring forward to you that maybe should be put in if you deem necessary? So the weekly reports are just for board members. So that's not a, a community oh, gotcha. issue. But as gotcha. always, when we do our, um, we, ha we were doing across the school board and school administration for community involvement. And that was an opportunity for school board members to say things that were going on. And you may want to reconsider uh, starting that again. Um, but we'll continue to say what we know and what events are happening. Um, I found our input for um, what we had done in the month rather belated because it was over and done. And I think we did talk about that. I, you might I, want to talk about what's for coming forward. I'm notifying the public in the future of items they may be interested in. I just didn't know how necessarily important it was to the community to know what we all had done in the past 30 days. Yes, we're all very busy. We attend everything we can. Um, we can't be everywhere. We cannot attend everything. And really, by the time it's over and done, I don't see that it's providing a service for the community. Future items, absolutely. It, it could very well be, and, and I understand your point. Sometimes, you know, as elected officials, folks like to know, you know, what you did attend, and it may very well, right, it, it may very well be in the past tense because we meet for a formal board meeting just once a month. So it is likely that it will be past tense, but I agree that it's important for the community to know what's coming forward as well. So, you, you, you know, just maybe a discussion that you want to have. Perhaps it could be that you want to share some of the events that you did and highlight some things that are coming forward. I think, too, in, in, in that respect, it's good for the community to know the kinds of things that their board members uh, are obligated to go to or do go to. Mm -hmm. And so that way, you know, when, when they see something coming up in the Bay Times, they'll say, wow, you know, probably something I've seen that the board members go to. I mean, I mean, it would really, I think it's beneficial. That's one way to communicate to the community. It, yeah, it, it, it just. Out there, what we do. Right. They might want to just show up just to meet us and talk to us. I mean, you never know. I mean, we don't have too many avenues of communication with the community. But again, that would be for future items. You haven't done them any service by telling them I went to X on the third. Okay. I, I meant, I meant to give a routine, a, anyway, thing, a routine thing. It's just a personal preference. Okay. Um, okay. That being said. On a different note, um, and when I was getting the weekly emails, we did that for quite a long time during this first year, and I was just learning so much about our school system, and uh, it helped me to appreciate the many, many layers of things that the school system handles. Um, and so I think that'll be beneficial, too, to our new board member coming on who has not served before, um, and I continue to learn. So I look forward to that. And I'm, you know, every time I read one, I was like, oh, my gosh, I didn't even realize we were doing that. Good point. <laughs> so it was very exciting. So. Very good point. Happy. We're happy to provide that. And any other discussion? May I have a motion to adjourn? Um, I, I move that we adjourn. Did I say that right? <laughs> a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Okay, that closes our work session. Thank you. Thank you.